Are they all the same? Oh no, they're not. <laughs> not at all. There is that Christianity which is located in the Quran and is called Rum. Rum. There's a whole surah of the Quran named Surah to Rum. And in that surah Allah speaks about Rum. Ghulibatil Rum. Fi adnal That Rum was defeated in a land close by. But afterwards, not long afterwards, Rome is going to be victorious. Who is Rome? Rome is Christianity. But that Christianity, the old one, the one which was in Constantinople, the one which is in Russia today, the one which is in Bulgaria and Greece and Armenia, that Christianity, which is called Orthodox Christianity, this one broke away and went to Italy and went to Britain and went to the United States. And this is the Western Christianity. So they're not all the same. Allah is saying, do not take such Jews and such Christians as your friends and allies. Who? Who are? who themselves are friends and allies of each other. Are the Orthodox Christians in Greece and Armenia and Russia, are they friends of the Jews? Have they made an alliance with the Jews? No, they have not. Well then, has this alliance come into being? Yes, it has. It is this Christianity the one in Washington, the one in London, the one in Rome, the one in Paris. This Western Christianity. These are the ones who have made an alliance with the Jews. And uh, it is a Zionist alliance. A Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance. Imran Hussein is speaking facts. In this lecture. And the Quran prohibits us from maintaining friendly ties with such Jews and such Christians. They are the ones who have caused Jerusalem to recent a stage. They are the ones who defeated the Ottoman Empire and conquered Jerusalem. They are the ones who brought the Jews back to the Holy Land. They are the ones who created the state of Israel. And they are the ones who have protected Israel and strengthened Israel to the extent that Israel is now poised to take over from the United States as the next ruling state in the world. And so the first part of the hadith, Umran Ubayt al when Jerusalem is flourishing, who did it? They did. The Judeo-Christian alliance. Then the second part of the hadith, Kharabu Yatrib. At that time, Medina would be in a state of forlorn desolation. Who is responsible for that? These are facts. Who is responsible for the status that Medina has today? Nabi Muhammad Islam is in Medina. And he praises Sham, Syria. And he praises Yemen. Allahumma barik lana fi shamina wa yemanina. And the people ask him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what about Najd? Arabia is divided into two parts. Hijaz, where you have Makkah and Medina. And the other part is Najd, where you have all the oil, for example. When they ask him about Najd, he said about Najd, from there will come earthquakes and tribulations, and from there you have Qarn al-Shaytan. Qarn can mean horn, the horn of Satan. Qarn can mean the age of Satan. The present rulers of Arabia, who created the state of Saudi Arabia, 
named after a man named Saud. <laughs> so this present regime, they are from Naj. And they are in alliance with the Judeo-Christian alliance, the Zionist alliance. And they're the ones responsible for Medina today being in a state of forlorn desolation. In order for that conquest of Constantinople to take place, the Prophet said something else. Remember, that alliance is prohibited for us, the Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance. Whosoever from amongst you turn to them with friendship and alliance, the Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance, which is today ruling the world, whichever of you, whoever of you Muslims turn to them with friendship and alliance, Allah says, you now belong to them, you no longer belong to us. In Allah, I have become a God. So that's prohibited. But over here, with Rome, he said, you will make an alliance with Rome. Nobody knows about the subject. Nobody teaches the subject. Where are the teachers? That you will make an alliance with Rome. So now we are being told, that Rome is Washington. <laughs> because all the Sunni governments are all in Washington's pocket. And only the Shia are friends and allies of Russia. So therefore, Rome has to be Washington. That is schoolboy scholarship. Rome is Orthodox Christianity. And the leader of the Orthodox Christian world today is Russia. But Syria is the frontline state. Syria has a border with Israel. Egypt has a border with Israel. But Syria's border is more strategic than, Israel, than, than Egypt's border with Israel. They want Syria because they want to overthrow Assad. So that they can install a Salafi government, Salafi Islam. And then they can show the whole world Salafi Islam wants to cut our throats. So they can have cause of terror. They can wage war. So Islam is a menace to the world. But they've not been able to overthrow the Syrian government. Why? In Libya, they got the UN Security Council to have a vote to permit a no-fly zone. And then they had their NATO aircraft coming in and destroy the Libyan armed forces from the air. They couldn't get it in Syria because China and Russia vetoed it. And so it's only on the ground. And for two years now, they've not been able to overthrow the Syrian government. The Jazz warriors have been fighting in Syria in a Yankee Jihad, killing and killing and killing and killing, but have not succeeded in overthrowing the Syrian government. There's a second reason why they want Syria to be overthrown. Not only to install an Islamic government in Syria, but because Syria is an ally of Russia. And Russia has a naval base in Syria. And if they can throw that naval base out of Syria, and put a NATO naval base, it would be an embarrassment of the highest order for Russia. And so now we see the stage is set. People were warning me, sending me all kinds of issues that Russia is a Zionist state, and Putin is a Zionist state, and all that rubbish. I hope they're listening to this lecture, because now the evidence is clear that Russia is standing up to the Zionists. You can't come with that nonsense anymore. Russia and China have stopped every single resolution they tried in the Security Council. And now, when they're ready to attack Syria, using this bogus false flag chemical attack that killed over a thousand people, Putin a few days ago responded. 
that if you attack Syria, if there's a need to attack on Syria, Russia will attack Saudi Arabia. New York that morning. Yeah. I went to Kennedy Airport myself that morning about 7 o'clock to pick up someone coming from Pakistan. And then I had to take that person to LaGuardia Airport. And when we reached LaGuardia, airport closed. Why? We don't know. And while we were sitting in the airport, wondering why the airport closed, then the announcement is made, everybody must vacate the airport. What's going on? Hmm? And then I heard somebody with a cell phone. I, I resisted using a cell phone for a long, long time, you know. So I heard this fellow say, one tower is down. One tower is down. So I wonder if this has something to do with World Trade Towers. So we got out of the airport. We drove back home. I was living in Queens. Turn on the television and there it was. <laughs> the 9 11 attack on the United States of America. <clears throat> As I saw it unveiling itself on the screen, I knew who did it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. This was the Anglo American Zionist Alliance, the CIA and the Mossad. They are the ones who did it. In, and then put the blame on us. Most Americans today know that the government is telling a lie. Most Americans know that. And yet, the scholars of Islam will not, will not open their mouths and say that 9-11 was a lie. Not the scholars of Islam. You will hear everything else, but you will not hear this. Prophet Muhammad said about Akhir al-Zaman, he said, there will be great liars. So beware. There will be great liars. So beware. Should this not be on the member? Should it not be told in the, in the khutbah? Warning our people about great lies in Afghanistan. 